So today I want to build a setup very much inspired by the workflow of Alessandro Cortini with his Tescam 4 track cassette recorder, this one here. It will sound something like this. And let's start building the setup on the test cam. We have four channels with various controls. So in VCV rack, I will use the new looper from a secret cell. We have here five channels, um, but I will only use four of them. And it has also synced recording, which can be very useful. And you can also load samples into it, which can also be quite interesting. Now I'm going to use an external mixer to mix the four channels. For this I will use the Rex mix. This is based on the Befaco Hex mix and it has a built-in EQ, right? It has um, panning together with modulation, of course. This is a modular environment. And we have also send effects, right? Exactly like on the test cam we have here. EQ, send effects, and panning per channel. Right, so I will connect the four channels and this will be in mono just to stay with the same limitations. Right, we have here individual outputs. So we have one, two, three, and four. Right, on the looper we have also a click track that I would like to use. This will come out of the ear output. So this will be, let's say, channel five. And before we test this, let's add a send effects. So for example, I will start with a delay. Right, I will set the mix all the way up. Again, because we are using this as a send effect. In this case, I will sync it also with the clock, but you don't have to do this. Here we have the clock output from the looper. Right, so it will go to the clock input of the delay. From there, this will go to some distortion, right? If I right click the outputs of the delay, since they are both from the Surge XT collection, I can just connect the cables, I can choose the color and just click it and it will make the connection for me, right? And of course, I will use also a reverb. This will be plateau, right? So in this case, I have to connect this manually, right? This will go to the reverb. Right, and now I will send or I will connect the send and return, right? The output from the river will go to the return, in this case return one, and the output, the send output, the send one will go to the delay. So now let's make a short test. I have here the FM operator that I can use. I can play this with my keyboard, right? So I will connect this to channel one, to the input of channel one. I can set the number of bars or measures I want to record. In this case, let's go with uh, two, for example. I have here also with the click track, I have here pre-roll set to two bars. So it will play two bars and then it will start recording. Right, and then we have a two bar loop. I can set a second channel here, the source also to channel one, and then it will just take the same FM operator. Right, in this case, I will go with, let's say, four bars and also here record something. So we have two loops, I can take off the click. Right, so we have two loops, one is two bars long, one is four bars long, they are perfectly looping. Right, so you can prepare all sorts of different uh, material here. Now we'll add some send effect, for example. Right, so we have the delay, I will add some, let's say reverb first. Maybe make this a bit louder. some reverb. Since the delay is 100% wet, we don't need the reverb also 100% wet. Add some drive. Right, something like this. I can change the EQ, for example, I can take the bass a bit down, add more mid, add more high here. Right, I will go now and record the bass, for example. So if, for example, I set this again to source one, channel three to source one, it will take just the FM operator 
I don't have to make this connection and I will go with let's say 8 bars Right, just recording a bass Right, and now we have also a bass part Again, I can change the settings here Add a bit of sand Change the volume something like this, maybe add a bit more distortion. I will mute this for a second. One, two, opalach, and three. Right, because I want to add a few more modules to process the sound a bit and add more of a cassette feel. So I'm going to make some space here. Right, so the first one is um, Nimbus, which is a Clouds clone. This is the Surge XT um, version. Right, I will connect the mixer and this will go to the output. Right, so now if I unmute, for example, the first channel, right, I will set Nimbus to pitch shifter. You will see soon enough also why. And I will set this to a lower quality. I will go with the lower stereo quality. Let me just raise the level here. Right, something like this. This will be fully wet. I want Nimbus to affect the whole sound. I'm going to set diffusion to zero. I don't want diffusion uh, to affect the, uh, the resulting sound. Also size will go to zero because this will um, lower the latency. And already if I bring this even more up here, you can hear that it's quite lo-fi. Right, you can hear the noise. Right, and we have here also pitch control, and this is why I use the pitch shifter, just like on the test cam. So we can play a bit with the pitch. You can map also your MIDI controller to this, if I unmute another one. Right, you can do all sorts of different things here with the pitch. Of course, you can use also other settings. I want to add now a bit more low fineness to this with another module. Let me take the volume down. From Surge, it's called Bonsai. This is a tape distortion module. So again, if I just right click, because they are both in the Surge XT collection, if I right click the output, I can connect it directly to the Bonsai input. Saves a, a few seconds. Right, in, in the Bonsai, I will set this to soft. Right, and I will just uh, change the sound a bit, maybe make this a bit louder. Right, so you can hear this is very lo-fi, I can add even more. Right, you can adjust this as you want. Right, of course, if this is too lo-fi for you, you can change the quality of Nimbus, for example, back up. Let's listen to this also with the bass. Oh yes. Listen to this. A bit more distortion here. Very lo-fi. Right, you can create all sorts of different things. If I change the size, I can also freeze this. Right, you can create all sorts of different effects with the Nimbus, with the Bonsai, with the Sand effects. You can do something like this. Right, there are many uh, performative tools you can use in this, um, in this patch. Uh, but this is more or less the setup. I want to show you now a couple of examples. So this is something Alessandro Cortini is doing a lot. Uh, four channels with four different chords and is basically fading the chords in and out. You can see I have here four channels that are playing four bars. Each one is a different chord. Right, I have again a few of the different settings here set just to adjust the sound. And now 
to bring them in and out, of course you can use a MIDI controller for example, but I'm using tact here from impromptu, which will basically fade in and out the voices, right? So I can start playing this patch. And just with a click, if I want to fade in or fade out. and I like this can decide how long each chord will play This is another idea that I saw in one of his videos, basically having a whole composition recorded to different tracks and then performing the tracks with the level, with the panning, with the effects and so on. So here, for example, on channel one, I have a bass. Right, then channel two is a sort of a sequence. And then channel three and four are the same, are the same loop, but just recorded in stereo. So I recorded a stereo voice into three and four. One is panned hard left, one is panned hard, panned hard right. So I have basically a stereo out of two mono channels. Right, and then you see in some videos uh, Alessandro Contini is using the OP1, in some videos the OPZ, but basically you can add more voices to this. In this case, I have here a sort of a solo voice. So I'm going to use this, I'm going to play with this a bit. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching. Cheers.